Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to you wherever you are and wherever you're watching this from. Thanks for tuning in to this special service, our Connect service for this year. Things will be a little different this week. We're looking forward to even more variety this morning as a whole lot of our own girls and ladies take part in this service. And we're really happy to have Rachel Cubitt joining in with us as well. Uh, Gordon couldn't be with us this morning to record. He's away off on more of that official business that Norman was telling us about last week. But Gordon has asked me to pass on his welcome to you as well. A few announcements as we begin. YF Youth Fellowship will be meeting tonight from 6.30pm. You can find the Zoom link as usual on our Instagram page or contact Amy Brownlee. And we'll be looking at last Sunday's story from Luke. This Wednesday evening, tune in for our midweek. There will be a, a mission focus this week. We'll be sharing a video presentation from Stand By Me as they mark 25 years of working with children in poverty. You can catch that on YouTube and Facebook from 7.30 on Wednesday night. Next Sunday, Gordon will be preaching on the next in our Luke with Certainty series. So you can look forward to that and be praying for him as he prepares. A reminder as well to get in touch with Rebecca Quinn or Katie Best if you're interested in joining the Holy Week virtual singing group. You can re record yourself joining in rising chorus from the safety of your own home and the voices of New Mills and Nocklamuckley will then be edited together in a glorious choral soup. There's more information in the church members Facebook group if you do need it. Do join in to that if you can. This week we had confirmation from the Centre of PCI that congregations will remain closed for worship services and other in-person gatherings until early April. A review in the middle of March will give us a, a wee bit more clarity on the way forward after that. Uh, and of course, as usual, we'll keep you informed of any changes as soon as we have more information. So those are all of the announcements. As ever, do keep an eye on our main Facebook page for more updates throughout the week. I'll now hand over to Catherine Martin from Connect, who will begin the main part of this Sunday's video. Welcome everyone to our annual Connect service. For those of you who don't belong to our congregation here at New Mills, Connect is our women's ministry and falls under the umbrella of PW. While it could be sad to think of what would be in more normal times, it is our hope and prayer as the Connect committee that wherever and whenever you're tuning into this service, you will be blessed and encouraged in your walk with Christ. Some of our Connect members will be taking part in this morning's service and we are delighted to welcome Rachel Cubitt back, who we all know and love and we're looking forward to hearing what God has to say to us through her. But for now, let's open our service in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we come boldly this morning to you and ask for your blessing on this time together. This week, Father, we have seen the beginnings of spring coming the warmth of the sunshine, the bird song in the air, and the signs of new life shooting up from the ground. And we are reminded of your majesty and power ordaining the seasons, that familiar and reassuring pattern of life. Help us to remember in the uncertainty of life that our good and mighty God is holding this world exactly as you've planned it. And with the coming of spring, our minds begin to turn to Easter, Father, we pray that during this time of Lent, we would take time out to focus on the significance of that amazing sacrifice and our hearts would be overwhelmed by the depths of your love for us. So Father, we pray for clear minds and open hearts this morning, that we would be changed by this time spent in your word. Encourage our hearts and remind us today that you are always working for us. In your name we pray, amen. For now, I'm going to hand over to Becky Freeburn, who's going to read our call to worship this morning. This morning's Bible reading is taken from Colossians 1, verses 15 to 20. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. 
He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Amen. Can we all join together in worship with Philip singing, Behold Our God. in his hands who has numbered every grain of sand kings and nations tremble at his voice all creation rises to rejoice behold our God seated on his throne Behold our God seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore. his hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful man, God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus Savior, risen now to reign, behold. This morning is taken from Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 10. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are nothing, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone 
without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Amen. and girls. I'm Rachel and it's lovely to be back here today. If you're older I, you might remember that I used to work in New Mills a few years ago. I'm sad that I can't get to see you all today but I hope you're keeping okay. Well I want to ask you have you ever been to a farm and seen all the things that they grow there? The Ulster Folk Museum is a great place to visit if you've ever been there before. I remember going there on our youth fellowship weekends a couple of years ago and one of the farmers showed us the potatoes that he was growing and we also walked round to the orchard and were allowed to pick some of the apples off the trees and take them home and I made some apple crumble with them, yummy. Maybe you've been growing your own fruit and vegetables at home during lockdown. My sister-in-law has a little vegetable garden. To do that, she had to plant the proper seeds in the first place. If you planted raspberries, they wouldn't grow into bananas. Or if you planted carrots, they wouldn't come out as onions. You'd think something really strange was happening if that was the case. The seeds show us what they will grow into. And here's a little packet of seeds that my mum and dad bought yesterday when they were at the shop. They are wallflowers and the picture on the front shows what they're supposed to look like when they're fully grown. But mum and dad wouldn't be too pleased if they planted them and they turned out to be weeds. The Bible talks a lot about seeds because they're the best example of something growing into something bigger and everybody knows what they are. People planted seeds to grow in Bible times and we're still doing that today too because that's the way God made the world, a way back at the beginning. In Genesis it tells us on the third day he made vegetation. That's a special word for plants and trees on the land that produce fruit with seeds in it according to what kind of plant or tree it is. But the Bible also uses seeds to teach us about what it looks like to be a Christian and to follow Jesus. There's a verse from the Bible passage that I'm going to talk about later in Galatians chapter 6 and it says in verse 7, You reap what you sow. That's a funny phrase, isn't it? You've maybe heard it before. But what does it mean? Well, it's just like what we were talking about a minute ago. To sow means to plant seeds and to reap means to gather or pick what they grow into, like carrots or raspberries. But the seeds the Bible is talking about here are the ones that we plant in our lives to help us grow to be more like Jesus. The sins that we do, like lying or being really mean or impatient, are like seeds that we plant in our lives that grow into weeds, which are bad. And if we keep doing these things constantly and letting them grow big enough, they can choke out the good things that Jesus wants to grow in us. So if you keep planting lies or meanness or impatience or any other sin in your life, it's just like growing a garden full of weeds and nobody wants that. 
the good things that Jesus wants to grow in us instead of the weeds of sin are called the fruit of the Spirit. We read in Galatians chapter 5 that these are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. So if we are serious about following Jesus and wanting to live for him, he will plant these things in our lives and he will help them to grow as we ask for his help each day to be loving, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle and self-controlled. It's not easy to grow these good things, just like it's not easy to grow the fruit we eat. It takes a lot of hard work, but we don't do it in our own strength. We do it with Jesus helping us, giving us the strength and the will to pull up and get rid of the weeds of our sin and to look after the good fruit of the Spirit. The fruit we eat is good for us and the fruit of the Spirit is even better because it helps us to become like Jesus and to show his love to the people in our lives. So next time you see any fruit in the fruit bowl or you're helping your mums and dads to plant seeds in the garden, I want you to remember these verses. That it's so important that we ask Jesus to plant the seeds in our lives that will grow into the fruit of the Spirit to become like him. Thank you, boys and girls. I'm going to pray for you now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word that helps us to know how to live for you. Thank you that you show us in the world that you've created all the good things you have given us. And one of these is the seeds that we can plant to grow into fruit and vegetables. But Lord, it's even more important for us to plant good seeds in our lives. And we ask that you will help us to grow the fruit of your Holy Spirit in our lives to become more like Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
wanted to take a brief moment to focus on the special projects that PW is supporting this year and actually next year now given the current conditions. Some of you will be aware that every year a home project and an overseas project is identified for PW groups to partner in supporting. The home project is supporting the work of CARE NI. This organisation provides a Christian voice for love, truth and justice in the public square. We are really looking forward to having Hannah Arnold, who works for CARE NI, come virtually to speak at our next Connect meeting, which will be via Zoom on the 24th of March. The Overseas Project is a hospital in Nepal and we're going to watch a short video now explaining the project. When we hear of Nepal, our first thought is of Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world and part of the Himalayan mountain range. Travel within Nepal is shaped by the terrain, with most roads twisting and turning, rising and falling so journeys are measured not so much in distance as in time. The Overseas Project for 2021 is set against this beautiful and challenging backdrop. Our focus is on Okaldunga Community Hospital, which is an eight hour drive east of Kathmandu. The hospital is built on the side of the hill, nestled in a valley. In some places, the tarmac road to the hospital has been damaged by landslide and in other places it is not finished and is only passable with care in the dry season. The 50 bed general hospital provides care for the population of the surrounding rural districts. One of the facilities of this hospital is the maternal waiting home. Over the past 16 years, this has provided care for many expectant mothers who live in these districts. The average journey time to the hospital is four hours by bus, jeep or motorcycle. Hello, I'm John Padgett. I'm a, a GP from Australia and I've been in Okolunga now uh, just a bit over two months. And uh, my wife Sally and I are delighted to be here. So the maternal waiting home, yes, I mean, in particular at the moment, um, there are needs for some renovations to the building, in particular water management, drainage and water supply uh, to make it easier for things like cooking and cleaning. That's, that will be a, a lovely thing to be able to do for the maternal waiting home to make it more comfortable for the, the women and their, and their partners who stay there. Um, I, I think it's in need of a paint job as well. So those kinds of renovating type um, uh, things for the building would be very much appreciated. When a mother attends the hospital for her checkup, if the staff feel that there may be a difficulty with the birth, they recommend that she come to the waiting home one or two weeks before her due date. In the home, she's given regular checkups, classes on nutrition, on baby care, family planning and so on. As the mother is there for a length of time, a family member, her husband, mother or sister, is encouraged to accompany her and support her during her stay at the home. Among other things, they help prepare meals, simple foods such as rice and vegetables form their staple diet. And fathers-to-be are expected to be hands-on with the cooking of meals and childcare. Alongside the accommodation, good sanitation, hot water and good food, which we take for granted. A major benefit for the new parents is the sense of family which is created and friendships which are made. We are very much glad to see you and your interest to work and partner with us. And it is very much beneficial for the um, rural people of Nepal. Uh, and it will be very uh, good uh, for us to make a um, join, joining hand uh, and also making a good partner in the future. The maternal waiting home has made such a difference in the lives of so many and will continue to do so. This year in PW, we have the opportunity to partner with this project. This, for me, is a very exciting project. 
As part of my midwifery training, I had the opportunity in 2005 to travel to Nepal for an elective placement where I worked in a couple of different hospitals. One of these was a rural hospital. The circumstances there are very difficult to describe. You saw the roads on that video. Nothing could prepare your back for a journey like that. But the people who live there, um, that journey is often a great deal more challenging for them. Women often don't make it to the hospital in time or don't even try to make the journey with very sad consequences. So I find this project really exciting. Traditionally, our March service would have been our direct giving night where we would have been encouraging our members to contribute financially to these projects. Obviously, we can't do this over Zoom. So we're asking you to prayerfully consider how you can support these projects. If you would like to contribute financially, we're using the church post box system again. So we would really appreciate it if you could place your contribution in an envelope marked connect in the church letter box over the next few weeks so we can support these two special projects. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Presbyterian women the organisation within our Presbyterian Church that enables, encourages and equips women to become disciples of Christ. We thank you also for our own Connect group, which sits under the umbrella of PW, connecting ladies in our congregation with each other and with Christ. We thank you for Catherine Martin, as she, along with her committee, provided a programme for the ladies in this most unusual year, which has been an encouragement and blessing to all. We thank you for the opportunity we had to donate to Craigavon Food Bank, and we pray that all the food and money donated will have benefited those most in need, but most importantly, been a practical example of showing your love to others. We also thank you for the Christmas Zoom night quiz, which allowed our ladies to have fun and fellowship together during a season which was so restrictive in so many other ways. Thank you also for the many encouraging Bible verses, videos and devotions which have been shared through our new Connect Facebook page and which have been read by so many ladies in our congregation. And we pray that these will continue to be a blessing to all our ladies. As the committee begin to plan a programme for next year, we ask that you continue to inspire and provide wisdom to Catherine and the committee to ensure that in all things, your name is glorified. Our theme for this year has been side by side and through it, we give thanks that we have been challenged to encourage one another and build one another up, just as Paul has encouraged his church in Thessalonica to do so. May we always seek to prioritise and find ways to encourage and build each other up in our faith, continually asking God to refine us so that we can grow his church no matter where we are or what we are doing. We give thanks that PW is able to support the work of the Council of Mission in Ireland by helping to fund invaluable deaconess training as well as send out and fund global mission workers in countries across the globe. We thank you, Lord, for the invaluable work of our deaconesses and missionaries as they minister in churches, hospitals, prisons and communities, both here in Ireland and further afield. And we ask that through their dedicated ministry, many lives will be restored and many souls saved for your glory. We also want to remember the two special projects which PW support through the Mission Fund. We give thanks for the Home Project, which is supporting the work of Care Northern Ireland to provide loved miscarriage healing retreats. We thank you that these retreats have still been able to take place through this pandemic, and we pray for each person who has attended or will attend them, that they will find comfort in their loss, healing of their pain, and hope for the days to come. We also want to remember the Overseas Project, which is the Okaldunga Community Hospital in Nepal, which offers essential medical care to expectant mothers. We give thanks that women can be shown God's love by receiving very practical help as they stay at the maternal waiting home for several weeks prior to their delivery, where they are well fed and monitored, as well as being able to attend classes on a wide range of issues, including baby care and nutrition, which is vital for them as they return to their very rural villages with their newborn babies. We pray that they will receive sufficient funding to allow for some of the essential maintenance work required at the hospital. 
For all the ladies, we pray that you will enable us to continue to live for Jesus by obeying God in every area of our lives, developing a heart for mission both locally and globally, encouraging Christ living and spiritual maturity, showing love and unity in our relationships and serving God and others using our unique gifts. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for who you are, a sovereign God in control of all things, who loves unconditionally, gives hope in abundance, and provides everlasting peace. Thank you for your continuous grace and mercy when at times we are so undeserving of it. We pray, Father, for those in our own church, family, who are suffering as a result of recent bereavement. Draw near to them, Lord, especially in this already difficult environment, and help them get through each day. For our elderly members and those who are ill, we ask that you strengthen and uplift them, Lord. Although we cannot physically be with these people, may they find comfort in knowing you are close to them and they are in our thoughts and prayers. We ask you to grant us patience, Father, especially those with young families as they navigate through each day, juggling between work, homeschooling and family life and trying to find a balance. Help to ease their stress and worry, Lord, and reassure them in these unprecedented times they are doing the best they can. Guide our government at Stormont, Lord, in the coming week and months ahead, as they make decisions on easing restrictions and returning to school. Give them discernment for the pace at which these happen. Grant them wisdom and grace, Lord, as they work together to reach agreements unanimously for the good of everyone. Whilst we may not agree with some decisions, Lord, may we find the grace and patience to accept them. Further afield, we bring our friends in Myanmar before you, Lord. We pray for peace there and calm to be restored. Protect those who are vulnerable. Give strength and endurance to the Christian organisations so they can continue in their good work. We trust you are at the centre of it all and focus our eyes on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello everyone. It's so lovely to be back here in New Mills today. It's a shame that it's in these strange times. And I'm sad that I won't get to see you in person because of the way things are. But it's still a joy to come and share with you. Thank you so much to Catherine and the PW Connect ladies for inviting me. If you have your Bibles, I'd love you to turn back to Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 10 that we read earlier. This passage is the end of the letter Paul wrote to the church that he had founded in Galatia. An area that we would now refer to as part of modern day Turkey. In Galatians, Paul is telling the church off for turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. He's talking about the problem of the Juda Judaizers, the Jewish Christians who insisted that Gentile or non-Jewish converts to Christianity had to follow Jewish traditions like circumcision. Paul shows them that this is wrong because they can't do anything extra to earn their salvation. It's only through faith in Jesus Christ. There are many Christians from a Jewish background who struggled with the truth that salvation was a free gift of grace from God because they had been so used to following the law in the Old Testament. Well, we need to know today as well that we're not saved by our good works but we are saved to do good works and to live the full life that Jesus has come to give us. And this is the theme of chapter 6, verses 1 to 10, which is titled in my Bible, Doing Good to All. So I'd like to share a bit about what we're doing in White Abbey and what we can do as brothers and sisters in Christ to follow this command that the Lord gives us through Paul in verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. So we'll look at doing good to our church family, doing good to ourselves, and doing good to God and others. Firstly, we're commanded in verses 1 to 2 to do good to our church family. It makes sense that Paul would start here as he had to expose the damage that had already been done by the false teachers that had crept into the church. He shows us the importance of looking after each other, 
not only physically but also spiritually by gently restoring anyone who is caught in sin. Now this is a big challenge because he refers to you who live by the Spirit. So he's not just talking about the minister or even the elders, but he's saying that this is the responsibility of all Christians. God wants us to grow in a loving community as a church, to get to know each other so well that we feel like family to each other, to not hide behind a mask. And I know we're all fed up with masks at the minute. We all know that our own families know the best and the worst things about us because they live with us in the same house for years and years. During this lockdown, I've been back living with my parents in Balmina, which has been great and I'm so thankful for them. And I'm thankful as well when they call me out when I'm sinning, not to get at me, but because they care about me. Do you have people in church like at home that you can really be yourself with and that you're not afraid to be honest with. It's a real challenge, isn't it? It takes a lot of trust to be vulnerable, not only about your own sins and struggles, but also in being honest with others about their sins and struggles. But Jesus shows that it is the way that we can best support each other and carry each other's burdens as we follow him. He showed us time and time again his patience and his grace with the disciples. He gently corrected them in their pride when they were arguing over who was the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And he showed them that they needed to humble themselves like little children. They even forgot this and he had to remind them again later on. He showed Peter the importance of forgiveness when Peter asked, how many times he should forgive a person? And Jesus replied, 70 times seven, meaning that there was no limit. Jesus demonstrated this later after his resurrection, when he forgives and restores Peter after Peter betrayed him. So we learn from Jesus' example, and through the Holy Spirit working in us, we can gently restore each other. This is such a contrast to either pretending that someone's sin doesn't exist or judging them so harshly that they're left scarred by it. As we live by the Spirit, he gives us the courage to gently point out someone's anger or laziness or jealousy or addiction. The list goes on and on and show them that we don't do this to get at them, but because we love them and want to remind them of the truth of the life that Jesus has called them to, to repent and to flee and run away from these things that can have such a destructive influence on them and to pursue Jesus again. But we have to be mindful of ourselves in all this. As Paul tells us to watch ourselves, we restore each other gently and with humility when we know that we're capable of the same sin or something different, but as equally destructive. As Christians, we all need to self-reflect and be self-aware of our own sins and repent when we give in to them. A wee bit more on that later. Well, what are the things that can help us create and grow this church community of being open and honest with each other, of gentle restoration and carrying each other's burdens? Well, it's probably similar for you in New Mills as it is for us in White Abbey. And the first of these is Bible study groups. COVID has meant that we've had to adapt in how we meet together to study God's word. Last summer, when restrictions were lifted, we were able to meet in my back garden to go through the book Christ and His People by Mark Ashton about priorities for the local church. We really miss our great friend Noel Agnew, who you can see on the right there. He sadly passed away at the end of September and we're so thankful that we were able to have him at this first study. It was a great night. It was so encouraging to see several of our young adults come along to this study faithfully and they want to make these priorities for the church their priorities too. They're a group who are close friends and they feel comfortable to share their struggles with each other. 
Our Emerging Adults worker David has been a great mentor and support to them in this because they've all come up through his forum Bible study, which is every other Wednesday night. And this is where he encourages openness and praying for each other. I've also really appreciated our own Bible study group, which David leads for older young adults, that makes sense, in our 20s and 30s. And this is called Huddle Group. When restrictions were lifted last year, we were able to meet for a while back in the church in our usual room, socially distanced and masked up, but we're back to being on Zoom for now. Even though we'd far prefer to be meeting in person, we're thankful to still be able to see each other's faces every other Thursday night. At the minute we're studying Mark and using the good book company guide Mark 1 to 8, The Coming King, to tie in with our series on Mark that we're looking at in our Sunday services. And it's already been pretty challenging in getting us to think about things like do we take the opportunity while we're doing good things for others to tell them why we do it because we love Jesus? Do we show compassion like Jesus to people that no one else has time for? These are big challenges. And the huddle group is great too because I know it's a space where I can share anything that I'm struggling with and I know I'll not be judged for it. We all need those spaces where we can be open and accountable to each other. So when we know what is really going on with each other behind the scenes, we can check in and ask, how are you getting on? The other thing that's so helpful to us in carrying each other's burdens is the prayer meeting. We have ours every other Wednesday night and it's wonderful to bring our thanks and our requests to the Lord together. When we were allowed to meet in the church hall before lockdown, that first picture is away back before COVID, it felt a bit like sitting in a school exam because all of our chairs were measured out two metres apart. Now we've just started meeting on Zoom since the beginning of January and it's working well. Whoever is leading puts us into breakout rooms to pray about particular topics. You'll see here in the photo that our last meeting, that it is we were praying for a place that is very dear to your hearts and you mills. We were praying for Myanmar. And in our breakout group, I was sharing about your special connection with the folks in Destiny Academy. Again, like the Bible studies, even though nothing will beat meeting in person, it's been so good to see each other's faces on Zoom and to pray for each other. I saw that you also have a time of prayer on Zoom as part of your midweek. And if you don't already go, now is a great time to start. Firstly, because if you have young children, it's, it's definitely easier to get along to the meeting with hopping on the, your computer rather than leaving the house. And also, if you're maybe feeling reluctant because you're shy, you can pray along with everyone else and get a feel for it all. There's no pressure to pray out loud. You can even mute your speaker. I'm sure the folks who go regularly would be really glad to see you and they would be very warm and welcoming. I'm also very thankful for the other deaconesses. It's so lovely to have a group who completely understand and have been in a lot of similar situations in their work. And this picture of us was taken at our last in-person gathering before COVID hit, way back in December 2019. That's crazy to think that that was over a year ago. Because we haven't been able to meet in person, we set up a Deaconess Association WhatsApp group. And it's been fantastic to keep in touch with everyone and to have this space to share Bible verses and worship songs and often we silly memes and videos to have a laugh. And we have a new president of the Deaconess Association, Rosemary, and she's been great in gathering prayer requests from each of us and sharing in the group so that we can all pray for each other, whether it's personal struggles or prayer for our work. Again, this is a very encouraging and supportive group. We're very glad that God has called Louise and Paula, two of the deaconesses who have completed their training, and Heidi, who I trained with at Union, into full-time service in different churches, Bangor West, 
Ballygrainy and Railway Street in Lisburn. Maybe you're already part of a WhatsApp group, maybe too many for your liking, but it's a great way of keeping in touch and encouraging each other, especially at the moment when we can't see each other. Maybe if you're not already part of one, you could be the one to start a WhatsApp prayer group chat where people can share their requests easily and Bible verses and worship songs. Or maybe it's just a simple matter of sending someone a message who you haven't spoken to in a while or someone that you know is lonely and finding things hard and saying, hey, I was just thinking of you. You might never know just how much they needed to hear that at the time. Even if you yourself are feeling lonely, you can reach out to someone else too. And it's likely that you'll have a good understanding of the other person's loneliness and be able to encourage them. So now we come to the importance of doing good to ourselves in verses 3 to 6. In White Abbey, we're partnered with two churches. Don Leary Presbyterian in Dublin and Malangi Mission in Malawi, which is part of the CCAP, the Church of Central Africa Presbyterian. I went to Malangi nearly two years ago. Again, it's hard to process that it was that long ago with one of our elders, Ken, and Helen, who's a member of Don Leary, to visit the church and to reconnect. So for me it was, re it was connecting for the first time with our brothers and sisters there. It was also an opportunity to see the ministries that they're involved in. This includes a hospital and primary and secondary schools. And we were going to discuss plans for bringing a team back in 2020 to lead a holiday Bible club to teach ministers in the Presbury and to provide training for these Sunday school teachers. Sadly, these plans fell through due to COVID, but we hope to go back again when things improve. Because it was my first time visiting Malawi, I was taken in all the sites that I had never seen before. And it was so interesting to see the local community going about their daily lives. One image that is hard to believe until you see it for yourself is the men and women carrying massive tubs of all different things on their heads, bananas and rice, even big massive bundles of sticks. It would have also been very common to see people cycling along with big bundles of things on their bikes, or often two to three extra folks on their bikes. For the people in Malawi, carrying their own loads is a part of everyday life. Maybe that you find that the constant lockdowns and staying at home and homeschooling have drained your patience and you find yourself being more grumpy than usual with the kids and wonder how other folks seem to hold it all together. Maybe as you've been watching the news or seeing what people have been doing out and about, you find it harder to resist complaining about the government and those who don't seem to be taking the situation seriously. Maybe you're the only child making an effort to support your elderly parents and you're frustrated with the lack of help from your brothers or sisters. There's many situations that cause us to look at and compare ourselves to others, especially in our digital age when people are so quick to share what they're doing or thinking. We can feel guilty that we're not doing as much as others or angry that others aren't doing enough. But Paul tells us clearly here in verses 3 to 4 that we need to have a true picture of ourselves first of all before looking at anyone else and for the need for us to test our own actions and our own motivations behind them so that we carry our own loads well. Why do we do the things that we do? Is it because of genuine love for Jesus and love for others? Or is there a secret underlying pride? that makes us feel better than others. We have to be aware of these things and rely on the Lord to continually show us who we really are, to let him hold up the mirror of his word to our hearts and to ask him to humble us when we know the pride is creeping in again. 
when we do this good to ourselves, we are far more unlikely to compare ourselves to others and to carry our own loads well with Jesus giving us the strength to do so. One of our ladies at White Abbey, Caroline, she's recently joined our staff team in a part-time discipleship role. She's passionate about seeing others grow in their faith and loves to share helpful material with us. Before Caroline came on staff, she led a course by Paul Tripp with one of our other elders, Tim, and this was called Instruments in the Redeemer's Hands. Each week we would watch a DVD presentation by Paul and then split into groups to chat about it and the study in our books. It was all about sanctification, us looking to become more like Jesus and helping other people to become more like him too. It was eye-opening and very challenging and I definitely need to go and look back at that material. Caroline's running another course like that in a couple of weeks time called Real Change from Biblical Counselling UK. It should be very encouraging and challenging too as it shows us that God wants to transform us for our good and ultimately for his glory. Are there any courses that you could take part in? Maybe videos or podcasts that you could listen to or books that you could read at the moment apart from the Bible? that could help you in your walk with the Lord. There's lots of helpful material on the PCI website at the moment if you want to go and check it out. Lastly, we are called to be doing good to the Lord and to others in verses seven to 10. Who remembers their shorter catechism? What is the chief end of man? Yes, it's to glorify God and enjoy him forever. We can do good to ourselves and to each other as a church because of our relationship with God. As we spend more time with God personally, enjoying him by reading his word in our devotional times and talking to him in prayer, we grow to know and love him more. And as we grow to know and love him more, we'll want to glorify him more. He does the work in us through the Holy Spirit and so we'll want to sow to please the Spirit, to sow the seeds of the fruit of the Spirit as I was sharing earlier with the children. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. How can we do good to others who don't know Jesus or who maybe misunderstand who he really is? and what he's done, by pointing them to him. Why not invite a family member or a friend or a neighbour to watch the church service? Or maybe to read through a gospel and chat about it together? These are all challenges to myself as well as anyone else. But when we start the conversation, God will help us to continue. We ran the Life Explored course last August in White Abbey which comes before Christ explored and looks at who God really is. It was great to see a few non-Christians coming and engaging with it. And we pray that there'll be more opportunities to reach out again as soon as possible. In the meantime, we can do good to others by sharing the practical love of Jesus with them. I'm sure many of you have been doing what we've been doing at White Abbey for people during this whole pandemic. Things like grocery shopping, pastoral phone calls, making CDs for those who can't watch the service online and offering prayer support. We're so thankful for all our volunteers who have thrown themselves into these ministries. And recently our elders have each been given a list of names to phone to provide extra pastoral support and make sure that no one is falling through the cracks. People are really appreciating the calls so far. My work looks quite different to usual. There's no friendship bar, there's no ladies group and there's no kids and co at the minute. I really miss these things and I really miss visiting people in their homes and in the nursing homes and even going into hospitals. 
And sadly, quite a few of the folks I would go to visit have died since the start of the pandemic. However, it's good that I'm still able to do pastoral phone calls and support people this way. It's a real privilege to pray for them over the phone. It's a bit strange at first, but it's wonderful when you get used to it. So many people are struggling at the minute with ill health, with loneliness, boredom and frustration. So on the days that I feel frustrated too, and there have been a fair few of them, I need to remind myself that it's a privilege to care for these folks and support them, even in this small way. The other main thing I've been able to do to bring an expression of God's love is pastoral gifts. I've had to put on my thinking cap and I'm very thankful for the internet and all the ideas it provides. So these gifts have included rainbow bags of hope. Do you remember back at the start of lockdown when the rainbow was being used for the NHS? This is to remind people of the hope they have in Jesus, to bring them back to the original meaning of the rainbow. And I, I'd put simple things in the wee bags, like a pack of sweets or tissues and a notebook and a bookmark. And I made versions of these bags for our kids and co-parents and grandparents and their children as well. Adding in wee bags of Haribo and toys like rubber ducks. And our lovely kids and co-leaders helped me to deliver the bags and it was great to get chatting to folks for a couple of minutes on their doorsteps. They really appreciated it. The next gift I made, and again I've been helped out by my mum and dad and nephews and all of this, and they were called Jars of Joy. We jammed jars with Bible verses written on different bits of coloured paper. We put seven verses in each jar, so whoever received one could take out a verse and read it on each day of the week. Mum very kindly wrote beautiful labels for the jars and used the leftovers to make little cards saying, what a friend we have in Jesus to add into the jars. And I made something slightly different for the people in the nursing homes, as most of them have dementia and they'd be unable to read all the verses. I got little tubes of Nivea cream and stuck labels on them with Isaiah 41 verse 13 on them. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. And I've called them helping hand creams to remind them that God is their helper. Other gifts have included a book to help people in their walk with the Lord. And the usual t chocolates and toiletries and plants that we deliver to people at Christmas. The next gift that I'm hoping to deliver is this little prayer box. It's made from a wee mint tin and it contains some paper and a little pen. And the poem inside the lid reads, When your head starts to worry and your mind just can't rest, put your prayers down on paper and let God do the rest. Very apt for the moment. So when we think through all these things and about doing good to all, to our church family, to ourselves, to the Lord and to others, can maybe feel a bit overwhelming and exhausting. I know it can feel like that for me sometimes. Can we really keep going without becoming weary and doing good? There may be some days that we feel weary, but the Lord encourages us to not give up altogether. And we won't as long as we rely on his strength and that we're able to look to the Lord and his strength and seek his face always. Thank you everyone. I'd just like to pray to finish. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word, how it is such a blessing to us and it tells us all we need to know about you. Lord, we thank you for the challenges you give us through Galatians, and how it's so important for us to look out for each other, to carry each other's burdens and to be honest with each other and to gently restore each other when we know we've sinned. Lord, we pray that you will give us the strength to do these things and to love each other well, as well as reflecting on ourselves 
and to be open and honest with you about our sin. Because Lord, we want to grow more and more to love you and in turn to love other people too. So help us as we do good to all, knowing that we do, don't do it in our own strength, but fully relying on you. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth Pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you In surrender I must give my every part Lord receive the sacrifice of a broken heart Jesus what can I give? What can I bring? To so faithful a friend, to so loving a king Savior, what can be said, what can be sung As a praise of your name, for the things you have done Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part Of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart You deserve my every breath For you've paid the great cost Giving up your life to death Even death on a cross You took all my shame away There defeated my sin Opened up the gates of hell And have beckoned me in Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring? To so faithful a friend, to so loving a king. Savior, what can be said? What can be sung? As a praise of your name, for the things you have done. Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part. Of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring? To so faithful a friend, to so loving a king Savior, what can be said? What can be sung? As a praise of your name for the things you have done Oh, my words could not tell Not even in part Of the debt of love that is owed By this thankful heart Thanks to everybody who took part in this video, to Catherine, Becky, Patricia, Vanessa, Gillian, and particular thanks to Rachel for coming back down the New Mills to help out. Uh, I'm sure that lots of you would have loved to see her in person once again, but that'll have to wait. Now, as we finish, let's pray together that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>